So good morning, Anand Dr. Sanjeev here. So today we are going to see a video, uh, the second unit of water supply and wastewater engineering. So that is for a treatment. Okay. So in this particular unit, uh, we are going to cover the entire uh, treatments uh, like conventional as well as the advanced food treatments. Okay. So mostly the conventional treatments are adapted uh, to remove the uh, suspended impurities. That is the main objective is to convert the water into safe and clean water. So clean means so we can remove all the suspended impurities present in the raw water which is collected from the source. And the raw water also contains the dissolved uh, solids but uh, the conventional treatment alone is enough to distribute the water to the consumer but for our own requirement uh, like uh, uh, industrial uh, feed water or any other uh, uh, good quality water we go for the advanced treatment to remove the dissolved solids also so based on uh, this particular things uh, so we have various uh, topics given in the syllabus of you so i have listed uh, all the syllabus like this okay so objectives of water treatment and what are all the various uh, unit operation processes available uh, to remove the impurities present in the raw water okay so this uh, under this unit operation process we have various uh, treatment units some of the treatment units are given in your syllabus uh, like flash mixer flapulator sedimentation tanks sand filters disinfection okay so this flash mixer flapulator sedimentation tank sand filter disinfection is comes under conventional treatment uh, to remove the suspended solids present in the raw water if we need uh, more pure water uh, that is if you want to remove the dissolved solids also from the uh, treated water we go for the water softening process so under the water softening we have various uh, methods are available to remove the hardness present in the water uh, not only the hardness so we can remove iron and manganese fluoride and uh, we have a, an, one more topic uh, called the desalination desalination process convert the uh, sea water into a drinkable or distilled quality water so along with that so we have residue management so residue means uh, during the treatment uh, we are getting lot of uh, sludge from the treatment so we should treat before uh, disposing disposing it somewhere okay. so we'll see one by one and uh, we have another topic uh, uh, construction operation maintenance of water treatment plant so what are all the various uh, operation maintenance activity to be followed or to be done for the various treatment units which is available in the water treatment plant so now we move to the objectives of water treatment yes i already said so to convert the raw water into safe and clean water so that is our main objective okay so if we convert the water into clean and safe definitely uh, we can meet the drinking water standards uh, which is available in the government websites or uh, it is a bas standards okay then what are all the impurities okay so once we know the impurities available in our raw water then only we can decide the appropriate treatments okay uh, the design part the design part means the size of the various uh, treatment units mainly based on the quantity of water to be treated but the type of treatment okay what are all the treatment uh, treatments is required is mainly based on the impurities present in the raw water okay so always this kind of uh, raw water are characterized 
as physical, chemical, and uh, biological or bacteriological uh, impurities. So, durability, color, taste, and odor comes under physical impurities, and uh, all the chemical substances uh, like uh, pH, uh, hardness, iron and magnesium, fluoride, nitrate, chloride, sulfate, calcium, magnesium. So, all those things and any other uh, toxic substances uh, like heavy metals. So, all these kind of uh, chemical impurities comes under chemical characteristics. Then, uh, mostly our raw water contains bacteria, some other uh, microorganisms also available. But mostly we are dealing with only the uh, bacteria kind of a thing. So, therefore, the biological characteristics is also called bacteriological characteristics. Yes, here I have given a uh, uh, few uh, parameters which is available, okay, uh, which is important drinking water standards which is available in our uh, CPH EU manual on water supply and treatment. Okay, so, the acceptable, acceptable limit uh, always we should treat to reach up to the acceptable limit. If no other option is no other water sources are available, the water is highly contaminated, uh, we can treat up to this much, yes, we go for the rejection limit. So, uh, I think it is called uh, uh, desirable limit and permissible limit. The acceptable limit are uh, called the desirable limit, but the rejection limit is different. Okay, so we should not use the uh, water beyond these values, but up to this value, yes, we can use it. So, that is a permissible limit if there is no other uh, water is available. So, turbidity is 1 NTU is a desirable limit and the permissible limit is 5 NTU. Then pH should be 6.5 to 8.5. Yes, we have to reject if the pH value is less than 6.5 and greater than 8.5. Definitely, it should be within this limit of 6.5 to 8.5. There is no deviation. Uh, in the permissible limit. Then regarding the TDS concentration, yes, acceptable or desirable limit is 500. Yes, we can go up to 2000 milligram per liter if no other water source are available. Then fluoride, yes, it should be 1. The desirable, desirable limit is 1 and it should not greater than 1.5. Then regarding the nitrates, yes, there is no uh, uh, exemption, so it should be 45 milligram per liter. Then we have a iron content, so 0.1 is the desirable limit. Then we can uh, use up to 1 milligram per liter. But beyond 1 milligram per liter, we should reject. Then E. coli, it is coliform. Uh, bacteria, so which is measured in uh, measured in the unit of uh, most probable number. Okay, so it should be zero. Yes, these are all the uh, impurities. So I already said uh, to convert the water into clean, uh, we should remove all the suspended impurities. Yes, so the suspended impurities contains yes floatable solids, then other suspended solids. Uh, in that suspended solids, we have a readily settleable, also called discrete solids, or non-settleable, it is called colloidal solids. It's a charged solids. Okay, so always the colloidal solids are negatively charged. It cannot settle down uh, in the sedimentation tank. 
we live uh, more than a month or a number of years, it cannot settle down easily. So therefore, we need to take a special care for this kind of a colloidal solids. Okay. So we can remove the floatable solids using uh, screens. Then because of this colloidal solids, we go for the coagulation and the flocculation process. So once we convert this charged colloidal solids into uh, flocks, then we can easily settle down in the sedimentation tank. It means uh, we have to convert the non-settleable solids into settleable kind of a thing. So therefore, before the settling, so we should do the uh, coagulation and flocculation process. Okay. So during the sedimentation, yes, we can uh, settle down most of the readily settleable and uh, the neutralized flocks in the settling chamber. If a few quantity escapes from the sedimentation tank, uh, will be uh, filtered by the filtration unit. So therefore, uh, using screen, coagulation, flocculation, and uh, uh, flocculation, sedimentation, and filtration unit, we can remove all the suspended impurities. Okay. So at the end of uh, filtration, yes, the water uh, will be clean. Then we have to convert the treated water into safe. We go for the disinfection. So screening, coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration and disinfection is called the conventional treatment.